So maybe let's yes. explain what the station is. Yeah, so you, when you're setting up, we have this, uh, this club right here. This is your stance line. Okay. And then we have this club back behind you, back here. That would be where your left arm would be on um, the, the downswing. Okay. So when we, that, and that's roughly set up about, say, 20 degrees inside the stance line. And then we have another one, which this is for the right arm on the follow through, 20 degrees inside, so that we would try to get them to match to make the swing more in a circle, hit the ball straighter. Hey guys, Eric here out at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the importance of your hand path and working your arms and swinging the club in a circle around your body. Really, really big key to keep things neutral, ultimately hit the ball more consistently better day to day when you go out in the course. Before we dive in, just a quick word from today's video sponsor. I want to talk to you today about Live View Golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do and the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to correlate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live View is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. All right, guys, we're right here with Mr. Steve Siraki. Steve, thanks for coming back out yeah, today for another it, video. Uh, Steve obviously had a Woodcrest Country Club in New Jersey. We coach together at CogornoGolf.com. Today's video about yeah. swinging in a circle around our bodies. A couple of things I'd like to sort of cover, yeah. everyone watching. The general concept of swinging in a circle, uh, the drill station we have set up, and this actually came from one of the lessons that we gave to one of our members online yep. um, that I want to kind of work through. So. I think the first thing conceptually, and it's really helped me and helped the, the player that we're talking with here, when I make a swing and I set up to the ball, my, let me just have you up here, Steve. Yeah. My general concept or idea, right, if we're looking at the down the line angle, yep. is I want the club head to work around me in a circle. It works up and in, all the way to the top, down and out to the ball, and then back up and in. Right. I think that's fairly easy to conceptualize. Yep. I think a big piece that some of the people that we work with miss is my hands also should work in a circle. So as that club head is working up and in, my hands are also working on a circle up and in, yep. down and out, back up and in. And my, since my hands are working in a circle, yep. my arms work in a circle yep. around me. Well, so, you got to remember too, and to not to cut you off, but when we play golf, the clubs are built on an angle, right? We stand to the side of the ball bent over, so we have to conform to that geometry. So the club has to move around us, our hands and arms have to move around us to make it all work. Yeah, just to hit it. Yeah. We're not swinging straight up and up no. down the line. Well, right? if we would, the clubs would be straight, straight, straight up and down, and we would stand like this to the A ball. Okay, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, right. <laughs> so, working around ourselves and yep. I think that like even honestly for me right now this is something that I've struggled with with uh, my typical thing and I think we see a lot of players would have this sort of up and up motion and they really lack the around yep. part yep and so for me when I go on the course even right now I even like the big picture general concept of working my arms and hands around me behind my right shoulder and then working them around me behind my left shoulder which is an easy concept yep so the player we were working with, which remained unnamed, uh, needed to work on the follow through portion of this. Correct. But we could set this up on, on both sides. So maybe let's yes. explain what the station yeah, is. Yeah, so you, when you're setting up, we have this, uh, this club right here. This is your stance line. Okay. And then we have this club back behind you, back here. That would be where your left arm would be on um, the, the downswing. Okay. So when we that, and that's roughly set up about say 20 degrees inside the stance line, and then we have another one, which this is for the right arm on the follow through, 20 degrees inside, so that we would try to get them to match, to make the swing more in a circle, hit the ball straighter. Got we it. don't want it to really deviate too much. And typically, I think what we see 
um, on the site is when golfers come down, they always have their left arm too far out. Yep. So do that again one more time. So when they would come down, when they come down, their left arm is outside the stance line. It could even be outside the stance line, say 20 degrees. And mm -hmm. we want it to be inside the stance line, 20 degrees, which would help the player swing a little bit more um, from the inside. And then when you would come through, we, when the right arm is parallel to the ground, we would want the right arm inside the stance line, 20 degrees, on top of this club. And so as I'm working through this, yep. The like net goal of that would be for us to have that swing plane and swing path just being very neutral. Yeah. So for instance, we're just trying to make this the swing direction just be fairly straight into the ball yeah. with this setup. Yeah. Um, and it really it's good for both sets of golfers. The typically the lower handicap players swing too far out to the right, and that's who that golfer this way. was. Yeah, they go too far out to the right. Yeah. And then typically the higher handicap player comes more over the top. So it's really good for both for both parts. Yeah, it's one of the few it's one of the few things that's like kind of universally everyone could use this as a stock model yep. to work off of. Definitely. Definitely. So let's hit a couple out here with this Steve just to yeah. start with. So, so I'm feeling like my lead arm and as I'm doing this in the beginning yep. kind of like left arm parallel to right arm parallel. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. you would stop and do that one more time. So you'd stop left arm parallel to the ground on the back swing. Okay. On the back swing. Yep. Then when it would come down, you know, be, be right on on that club. Then when you swing through the right arm parallel to the ground is covering the, the front club. So for me, like let's say I go too far up and not in enough, this even can serve as a good visual for the backswing as well. There's no doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt. And, and we've told players before that if they could get shafts, alignment rods, and they could put something right here, right through their right shoulder, and this shaft that I'm holding is this stick on the ground or this club on the ground. Okay, got it. So from a drill perspective. So as I work down to left arm parallel, let's say, am I looking for the hands to be kind of like sternum, kind of middle torso? The, the, hand, the hands would be in. Yeah. So they would be going right through when the left arm's parallel to the ground. Do that again. Talking back swing? Uh, on the downswing. Downswing, okay, got on it. On the downswing. Is that what you were asking? Either way. Yep, so on the downswing, when you're coming down and your left arm's parallel to the ground, we know it's inside the stance line, 20 degrees, yep. and your hands would be coming right through, say, like the mid part, mid to lower part of your bicep okay, as got they're it. coming down. That'd be the first one. Let me, let me hit a couple out here with that first piece. So for my visual, I'm feeling the lead arm in or on that or just inside of that. Yes. That piece, let's do one there. Nice. And now, as I'm feeling that, Yep. Obviously, there's the arm piece. I mean, certainly we have body parts that go along with it. Yep. Right. So a lot of people who we see, you know, the higher handicap player doesn't get the arm in enough. Correct. And a lot of times, 80% of that's the torso. I mean, like, uh, you know, they didn't turn. There's no tilting. Yeah. That and the leg flex. And the like, leg, yeah, exactly. We could say the uh, body uh, stuff. Yes. The body stuff. So my arm is in. This is the piece. So this would be the golfer who really struggles with the pulls the fades, the slice pattern. Maybe some heel hits from heel time hits. to time coming across the ball. Okay. And for, for them, they might, they might literally feel like when they're going back, their hands are going into their right pocket yeah. or they're like hip high. If they're really coming across the ball or over the top, that's what they may feel. Yep, another nice one, tiny draw. So and this probably feels to you like the club's behind you right a, li now. A, a little bit, but you know what? It's like I've worked on this consciously as my swing has gotten better to yeah. be less up. So it feels less weird than normal. I also think like we're obviously talking about the lead arm over it. You know, a big piece for me to get that was making sure my trail shoulder worked around enough. Yep. My right arm felt like it went more around. Correct. Me, right? Definitely. So it's, it's not all just me feeling like I'm pulling my left arm across my chest. It's also the trail, trail side. And the, and the legs and the hip turn, which we just touched yeah, on exactly. a minute ago. So for me, to make that easier, my trail shoulder and trail hip feel much more round to keep the arm in on the way down. Right. And I think that for the player who hits the pull, you know, fade style pattern, we want to live there first. Yep. That'd be like step one. Yep. Is have the arm in on the way down. Yes. Right? And then getting it in on the way back is going to make that a lot easier. There's no doubt. And then what'll happen, like for me, a lot of times, and like you said, maybe the lower handicap player, they'll be in, they'll be good here, but then their club will go too far down the line. Right, so they'll, they'll swing, let's do that again. So the lower handicap player 
when they come down, they have, let's just say they have their left arm inside properly when it's parallel to the ground. Yeah. And then when they swing through the ball, their right arm is on the stance line, yep. swinging too far into out, which would make the, the exit too high, could make the push wider and the hook wider. And a lot of times we'll see with that, with the push hook, an, an excessive rotation. Yep. Club face pointed too far yeah, down the Yeah, the arms the start coming off their body and they start rolling their uh, their hands and arms. We uh, see this a lot. Uh, a shot that was about 10 years ago on the 10th hole when Rory had to leave the Masters, hit that big old snap hook. Yeah. That was his arms leaving his body, yeah. swinging way too far out to the That's right. That's a good example of like most players would like to have that problem first. Yes. And then we could fine tune and bring that in. Yes. And for me who has that, who can get into the push hook, I need to feel that right arm more across my chest and the, in, and the left arm more round. Yes, no yeah. doubt. Kind of just be, the opposite of the way and it, back. Right, and it'd be the same thing as if I had this club and I put the club here on your front left shoulder, this club and the shaft I'm holding represent this club on the ground. And there's there's a lot of um, you know feels I could have here. I'm gonna kind of try and put them both together. Yeah. So there's a lot of different potential feels. Yeah, see, that's good. Now the ball hooked less when you're yeah. working on the front side of the swing. Yeah, exactly. And so if I'm if I'm the player who gets the overhook and the big push, I'm probably putting more tension here. Yes. I check that. Yep. But I'm putting more tension here. And I can feel that in a lot of different combinations. It might be as simple as me thinking the club head around. Yep. Maybe I'll feel my hands themselves working in and in, right? Like matching this with my hands. My hands going inside of that, staying inside of that, working inside of here. Right? So a hand, a little hand path feel can give me the same thing. And then obviously I can feel the arms and I can feel either one of them. So we probably both have worked with players who like, hey, for me to keep the left arm in, should I feel left arm or right arm? Both, either. Yeah. Right? It's obviously gonna be up to the player. We just wanna make sure, hey, when your left arm's parallel to the ground, the downswing, it's inside the stance line. That's what 20, we're checking. 20, 20 degrees. Yeah. Your hands are, as they come down, do that one more time on the hands. So when your hands come down, Right, as your hands are coming down, they're going right under the shoulder through the bicep. Yep. And when they come through the ball, they would go right through this part of the bicep on the follow through. It's like under the shoulder on yes. both sides. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. All right, let's do one more here. And once again, it goes back to, I could even use two sticks, right? If we did two, if we wanna just knock one out where I'm holding both. Yeah. This is for both parts, back and the follow through. Feeling more more of the around on yeah. both sides, so th that's a big one. Um, I think this is the easiest way. Like we said, there's a lot of ways we could do this, but I think for the player who needs more of this in there, yeah, what's just to have a visual. Um, you know, that the, the hands and clubs need to swing around you, and if we can get these to match on both sides of the ball, that's going to tighten up the dispersion and tighten up your pattern of shots. So you have more control of the golf ball. So if this is if this is here, both of those in, let's just say 20-ish degrees. Yep. If this is like 3 o'clock, it's probably like 3.30. This is 9 o'clock, it's probably like 8.30. Yep. Kind of halfway in between. Okay. And so, guys, if you're someone who has, I would say, big direction control, because there's benefits to contact. I mean, there's more to the story of this, too, yeah, low yeah, point yeah. control. But especially if you're someone who has big direction control issues, the odds are very high that either your swing path and or club face to path are quite far off. Yes. And this would be a really easy way to start and film yourself from down the line and see where your arms are on both sides. Yep. Start with getting it working in enough underneath your shoulder into the ball. Get to the point where maybe it's a little push hooky if you're a higher handicap player. Yep. And then work on the follow through piece a second to sort of just touch that up and tighten up the dispersion, it. right. Tighten it up. So beautiful. Arms, yeah. hands around, Steve. Thanks. Maybe you guys yep, have any questions it. as always leave a comment uh, down below. We'll put a card on the screen for another similar style video like this if you want to neutralize that swing plane. We'll also put a card for cogornogolf.com. We'd love to work with you there.